Top 10 Fastest Cars in the World There are many reasons why people enjoy driving. Some people find it relaxing, some people like feeling the power of the car underneath their feet, and some people just like to go fast. Speed is fun, that's an absolute fact. It's amazing to blaze down the highway, with nothing but the open road in front of you. But how would it feel to step out of your sedan for a day and climb into some of the world's fastest cars? You probably wouldn't be able to contain yourself. People are always looking for a faster car. Automakers have done everything possible to try and boost the haul of the and top speed. As a result, we've seen some seriously impressive cars be produced, especially in the past few years. There's a constant competition going on to see who can be the fastest, which means even these super speeders may be overshadowed by something new in the near future. Here are the fastest production cars in the world currently. We can spend some time daydreaming about which one you'd like to take for a spin. If you have a budget where you can easily spend six figures on a car, then any one of these 10 fastest cars in the world will be a great choice. Number 10, Aston Martin 177, 220 miles per hour. The engineers at Aston Martin reached deep into their hearts to give this car a spot on the fastest ever list. It's the fastest and most dynamic Aston Martin created. It packs a 7.3 liters V12 with 750 horsepower and 800 pounds per foot of torque. That makes it a perfect fit for James Bond. Only 77 cars were made, which earned the car its name. As with any Aston Martin, the vehicle simply looks stunning. More attractive than many of the cars on this list, it can accelerate from 0 to 60 miles per hour in about 3 seconds. Plus, movie fans will love speeding Bond books out wherever they drive. It's the car that gets both with Sinski. Number 9, Pagani Huara, 230 miles per hour. Take note. Pagani has stormed the hypercar market in an incredibly short amount of time. Not only do the cars look great, check out the sweet lines on the back, but they perform even better. That's all a car junkie could ever want, right? That and they're pretty exclusive. You need at least $1,300,000 to get one of these bad boys. While the Huara isn't the fastest car out there, it makes up for it in acceleration. The twin-turbo V12 6-liter engine puts out 730 horsepower. No wonder the guys from Top Gear were so impressed. It will have your passenger glued to the back of the seat with its quickness. Number 8, Wendel ST1, 233 miles per hour. The Danish-made Wendel is a testament to what a few people can make when they come together. Introduced in 2009, it's the company's first supercar. This one is one the list even though it gets a little bit of bad press. Okay, a lot of bad press. On its appearances on Top Gear, it had a series of accidents during filming and was thus bashed pretty harshly by the hosts. Car guys tend to trust the hosts pretty highly, and it can be tough to get past a critical public review like that. Still, it has a 6.8 liters V8 that generates 1,104 horsepower and 1,050 pounds to foot of torque, and it can reach 0 to 200 miles per hour in just shy of 9 seconds. For about $770,000. You can get all of this and cool features like keyless entry and an adjustable steering wheel. It's another one that that is tough to come by. Number 7, McLaren F1, 241 miles per hour. This car is almost a quarter century old, and it's still squeezed into this top 10 list. That means at the time it was made, it was worlds above the competition. Believe it or not. It has an interesting seat configuration that can fit three people. The driver's seat is in the center of the car, with two rear seats in the back. Sitting in the center may take some getting used to. Under the hood is a 6.1 liters BMW MV12 engine that puts out 670 horsepower and 520 pounds to foot of torque. In case that seems low compared to the others, keep in mind that the fastest version of the new Mustang makes 444 horsepower, so 600. 70 is still crazy fast, even if it's not in the thousands. The car can accelerate from 0 to 60 in just over 3 seconds. F1s are known for their unique aerodynamic features, and their limited release. In 6 years, only 106 McLaren F1s were ever made. Number 6. 
Koenigsegg CCR, 242 miles per hour. And now we get into Koenigsegg's second car on the list. Can you tell they like to make speed demons? Like the Veyron. This sports car also held the fastest car name for a short time. The CCR reached its record speed. 242 miles per hour at the Italy Nardo Ring in 2005. Even though it's an earlier incarnation of the incredibly fast Avro R, it still managed to make this list. It's just that good. It's powered by a 4.7 liters V8 that makes 806 horsepower and 920 pounds per foot of torque. It hits 62 miles per hour from a standstill in 3.7 seconds and completed a quarter mile stretch in 9.7 seconds going 146 miles per hour. Again, these cars are extremely hard to get into your hands. You have to have a lot of money, and sometimes even know some of the right people. Number 5. SSC Ultimate Terra, 256 miles per hour, Shelby Supercars, a company that virtually no one had heard of temporarily held the fastest car title for three years, 2007 to 2010, until the Veyron topped it. It had a car that was unexpectedly quick, which shocked quite a few people. Regardless of the overthrow, SSE has made a mark in the hypercar world with its ultimate hero. It has a 6.3 liters V8 engine generating 1,287 horsepower and 1,112 pounds to foot of torque with its twin turbocharged fury. It costs only $600,000, and it can hit 200 miles per hour in under 16 seconds. The only downside is, no driver aids are present to control all of the engine's power. So this is one that you should only drive if you really know what you're doing and have a lot of experience. Make sure you know what you're doing before you get behind the wheel of the SSC or you could end up with $600,000 worth of a smashed car. Number 4 to 9 FF GT 9R, 257 miles per hour, built upon the well-known design of the Porsche 911. The GT9R steps up the game. The interior has been stripped to make the car lighter and the shape has been simplified. It also sports some unique features. Its engine is a 4 liters flat 6, which means 6 cylinders are configured horizontally in a 2 times 3 pattern. This is the only Porsche on the list, but it's by far the fastest and also most fun to drive. This means the car produces a magnificent 1,120 horsepower and 910 pounds to foot of torque. The car goes from 0 to 60 miles per hour in only 2.9 seconds. The best thing about the GT9R is that the company ensures you will get a unique car in terms of color, design and performance. No two GT9RS are the same, for those that really want to say their car is one of a kind. The Porsche 9 FF GT9R is the way to go. Having a crazy fast car and it's unlike anything else out there. Sign me up. Number 3, Bugatti Veyron Super Sport, 268 miles per hour. It's a shame the Veyron made history by being the first to go faster than 250 miles per hour, because none of the cars that came after it can match up to its beauty. It's a complete stunner both inside and out. To match the insane speeds of cars like the Adro or in the Venom GT, Bugatti introduced the Super Sport, which ups the speed and performance. It has an 8 liters W16 engine that's a quad turbocharged feat of engineering. It impressively generates 1,106 pounds to foot of torque and 1,200 horsepower. This Veyron does 0 to 60 in 2.4 seconds, only a fraction of a second faster than the Adra R. Despite its $1.7 million price tag, the Super Sport delivers the luxury and comfort that Bugatti is known for. And that's awesome, especially when you're going at half subsonic speed. Bugatti just released the Chiron, the successor to the Veyron. It's limited to 261 miles per hour in road mode. But who knows how fast it will go after that. Bugatti hasn't shared yet. Perhaps we have the new fastest car on our hands. We'll find out very soon, as those stats should be released later this year. Number 2, Tennessee Venom GT, 270 miles per hour. We all know those insane demonstration videos Tennessee throws up on YouTube, the ones that practically scare you with how much power is in its modified car. Tennessee put its expertise and power to the test on the Venom GT, which is a 1,244 horsepower twin turbocharged V8 Wolf and Lotus Elise clothing. Tennessee 
has had his share of problems, and is often considered a bit of a jerk, but he does make some extremely fast cars. The Venom GT generates 1,244 horsepower and 1,155 pounds to foot, of course, which enables it to go from 0 to 62 in 2.8 seconds. Going 0 to 200 miles per hour happens in just 14.51 seconds which is extremely quick and despite the rippling wind on the outside, will be safe and snug in a smooth interior, which they pay special attention to. It's not like some sports cars that strip absolutely everything out. This one keeps you comfortable while you fly past people on the track. Course Street, number 1, Koenig Segei Dre 273 miles per hour, Adra in Swedish means to act. Koenig Seg definitely acted in the interest of building the fastest production car in the world right now. And it's been in production since 2011. Top Gear magazine named it Hypercar of the Year for 2010. Still, Koenig Seg manages to fly somewhat under the radar, even with the fastest car. It's not quite a household name. Yet, part of this might be because they make an extremely limited supply, making them tough to get even if you have the cash. They're also pretty picky about who can drive their cars, and have turned down many journalists and automotive review sites, shows and instances where they won't have complete control of the car. This car will rocket you from a dead star to 186 miles per hour in 11.7 seconds, enough to land it in the record book. If that doesn't make your drawing rock, it's 0 to 60 times 2.5 seconds. Under the hood is a turbocharged engine, a 5 liter V8 dock that generates 1,200 pounds feet of torque and 1,140 horsepower. It'll only cost you about $1.2 million to own one of these seats. That price tag is steep, but it's worth it to people who want to be able to say they have the fastest car in the world. Now that you know about the fastest cars in the world today, which one would you choose?